Hey guys, welcome back to Hack Ohio for your second video. And we're going to go ahead and continue with uh, getting backtrack and go over a couple things with that. <clears throat> and first I thought it also might be kind of um, helpful and fun to start each video just with a little kind of a tip or a trick. Um, since this is geared at beginners and you're just starting uh, to learn about, <clears throat> excuse me, hacking and um, computer security and all those sorts of things. And what you're going to find as you go throughout this and you learn more is that Google's really going to become pretty much your best friend um, for information gathering. Um, it's amazing what you can find with Google and also what kind of vulnerabilities you can spot as well. Now I've already got this string in Google here and it's a really long string um, of text and characters so what I'll do is I'll just uh, paste that or I'll put that on our website underneath the video and you can copy and paste it. And basically what this, <clears throat> what this is doing for us is it's telling Google to search their you know humongous index of websites for files that would contain these usernames and passwords. And you're thinking why would anyone leave files on their websites that contain this and it's amazing they do. Um, lots of sites do. Um, I found one just right away here as you can see. Um, admin, common username for the administrator, password 5834, which is horrible. Uh, we are going to go over passwords in a couple tutorials from now. Uh, but you can, you get an idea of here of what you can find using some of these different um, commands with Google. You can really see how vulnerable some of these sites are. Um, and there's just pages of these. Now, not every single one of these is going to give you a list of passwords and usernames, but sometimes you might actually get the um, the hash and we'll go over that later too. So I will leave this on the site for you guys to check out if you haven't already seen something like this and tried it. Um, back to backtrack-linux.org and I didn't really mention before why we were going to use Backtrack as opposed to any of the other operating systems and this one was designed uh, just for basically hacking or penetration testing and it already comes stacked with pretty much every tool we're going to need to do it. Now there are a few other things we're going to go ahead and download into it, um, but for the most part it has everything we need. Now it's, like I said in the last video, if you've been using Windows, you're not used to Linux, this is not going to be something you'd want to use as your primary operating system. Uh, you'd probably be really lost and really confused and a lot of the popular Microsoft programs that people use on an everyday, ba everyday basis, sorry, um, are not going to work uh, with Linux. <clears throat> so that's why I had um, told you to go ahead and get either a thumb drive, flash drive, USB drive, whatever you want to call it, um, at least four gigs, or a blank DVD. So just go over here to download on Backtrack, and this little box is going to pop up. It's optional if you want to put your name and email address. Um, if not, just click download. Then you're going to have to select your version, and go ahead and do the um, R2 release, Backtrack 5 R2. And then you're going to have to select between these two, KDE or GNOME. I've worked with both of them, and if I was going to use Backtrack as um, an everyday operating system, I would probably go ahead and select the GNOME version. But that's not what we're doing here. Um, and if you want to follow along exactly in the tutorials, go ahead and do the KDE version. That's the one that I'll be using throughout this um, process and then select your 32 or 64 bit and that's going to depend on the system you're on. Um, if you're unsure you can just go into your Windows configuration and it should display um, the type you're running. Um, image type, ISO, and then download type, torrent or direct. Um, I usually just do the direct. Um, we're going to go over torrent files later on and how we can actually use them, um, but since this is Backtrack's website I would you know, there's no problem if you want to download the torrent um, or you just do the direct click download. And this is going to take a little bit to do. It's probably about, I think it's right around two gigs is the file size. And just remember the, your location on where you're downloading this to. Uh, typically it'll just go into the user's download file in Windows. Um, if not, maybe you can place it on the desktop, wherever. Uh, once it's done downloading, you're going to see an image just like this just a little piece of paper or a little picture of a file with a disk in the middle 
and it will say if you hover over it, disk image file, and that's what you want. Now, depending on whether you want to do this on a um, CD or a USB will depend on which one of these different programs you want to download. Now the other option is to run it virtually. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, there's a program called VirtualBox, which is free to download, and it allows you to boot this operating system within Windows. And it pretty much does what it says, it just kind of runs virtually. I don't recommend that you do it this way, so I'm not even going to go over the the tutorial on that one. Um, if you just if you want to do it that way, just Google um, VirtualBox, and you'll be able to get to their website. Um, we're going to go ahead and either do USB or DVD. If you're going to do the USB, um, this is the one that I like to use. I think it's the most user friendly, and it's LinuxLiveUSB.com. And the program is called Lili, L-I-L-I, -L -I, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's very easy to use. Um, I don't even think I have it anymore, so I'll go ahead and download it. Yep, Lili. So just go ahead and download that. And it should download rather quickly. Okay, go ahead and open that. Yep. Okay, go ahead and install. And while that's installing, if you're wanting to go to DVD, you can go to um, imgburn.com and download um, Image Burn. Very easy to use, very user friendly. There's a screenshot of it. And uh, what you're going to be doing is this one here, once you open it, is write image file to disk. And you're going to go through pretty much the same methods, just you're going to be doing it to a disk instead of. Um, a USB. And let's see here. Alrighty. I'll go ahead and run it so I can show you. And this is extremely easy to do. Um, it's laid out really nice. Up here it'll say choose a USB key. Um, I don't have a USB in right now, but um, it typically it'll be like your E drive or something like that. It'll find it automatically once you plug it in. You'll select that. Come down here and ISO is the kind of source we're using, so you'll select that, and wherever you um, downloaded that file to, whether it's in your user download folder or in your desktop, just select that. And then what it's going to do from this point, um, it's going to verify. It'll after you select the file, it's going to go through a little sequence here to verify what type of operating system it is, and it will say verified Linux, and everything will be okay. You'll get a green light. And then here, persistence. I, did, I want to talk about this for a second. Um, since we're going to be booting off of a USB drive in this case, whatever we do within that operating system within Backtrack is not going to save. So when we run updates or install some additional programs, it's not going to be there when you reboot. So the persistence is actually um, what's going to allow us to do that. And once it reads this USB, there's going to be a little bar here, and it's going to tell you how much space you have that you can use for persistence. And I'd go ahead and use, you know, as much as you can there. And um, down here under options, this enable launching, just un don't click that one, you don't need that. But we, this is very important here. Format the key in F8 and FAT32. Um, you have to select this one. And please note that this will erase any data and all data that is on the USB. Um, the, the, the drive has to be formatted in FAT32 prior to doing this. And go ahead and put hide created files on key. And once this is all done, you'll have green lights here. And you'll be just click the lightning bolt and it'll start doing it itself. And that's really all there is to it. If you guys have any, you know, specific questions on this, um, you can uh, leave me a message on YouTube or just uh, shoot me an email and I'll get back with you. Go ahead and close out of there. Now if you're doing the DVD, you're basically going to go through similar steps and you'll want to do this one. Again, if you have any specific questions, feel free to um, leave me a message or you can email me and I'll get back with you. Um, and then <clears throat> Before you actually, or I guess the question a lot of people ask is, how do you boot from this point? 
um, you got your DVD or your um, USB all ready to go and it's ready to boot and in the next um, video we're actually going to go over um, just the simple setting you have to go into your um, computer and tell it to boot the USB or DVD before booting the hard drive and that's pretty much all there is to that and we will in the next um, video get started on doing that and I will see you guys later thanks